Yeah, I'll let you know. Perfect. <laughs> okay, so good evening, everyone. For those who don't know me, I am Allison Vickery. I'm a member of the board of directors of the Alberta Lymphedema Association. Myself and the rest of the board are very excited to welcome you here tonight for our February Lymphedema Night, where we will be joined by our special guest speaker, Robin Devine. Before we jump into Robin's presentation, I just want to give a few brief announcements that may be of interest to you. So as most of you know, World Lymphedema Day is 10 days away, and this year it is also the 20th anniversary of the Alberta Lymphedema Association. So in celebration of that, we have a number of things going on in March, which you may have already received some communications about. Um, first, on March 6th, we will be having a small celebration here in Calgary um, for our Lymphedema Day and Ella's 20th anniversary. It's free to attend and we would love to see you there. So please email us for further information or to RSVP. I'll put the email in the chat in case you don't have it. Second, Ella will be attending the LymphiCon Health Conference on March 4th. It should be a very interesting and educational day filled with some amazing speakers. So if you're interested in attending, Robin might mention it as well. You can also find further information on that on the upcoming events page of our website, which I'll put in the chat as well momentarily. Um, and finally, we have a number of other activities and announcements coming in March for Lymphedema Awareness Month, including our second annual fundraiser with Park Bloom Jewelry. So keep your eyes open for our Lymphedema Day Digest newsletter, which comes out on March 1st via email. And of course, you can follow our social media pages where we share all that kind of news as well. So uh, on to the presenter. Robin Devine is a 2200-hour massage therapist who specializes in lymphatic drainage and lymphedema therapy, as well as relaxation and therapeutic massage, brain therapy, brain reflex therapy, and craniosacral therapy. She is a fully certified com complex decongestive therapist, an expertise that she will be sharing with us this evening, and is the owner of the Lymph Balance Center in Calgary. She's also the creator of the annual health conference, LymphiCon, where, as I mentioned, Ella will be attending as a sponsor and guest this year. On top of all of that, Robin has recently joined us on the Ella Board of Directors in hopes of leveraging her extensive experience working with her patients to assist us in continuing our work to serve the needs of those impacted by lymphedema. Today though, Robin will not be speaking on behalf of Ella, but rather from her multitude of professional expertise to tell us a bit more about what CBT is and how it works. So without further ado, Robin, I pass it over to you. Thank you, Allison. Um, I just, I wanted to clarify, do I have like, a, like most people who know me will know this is a problem, but do I have a time limit? I think when people start falling asleep, then it's over. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Well, if everybody <laughs> turns off their cameras, I'll just keep going. No, it's all right. It's all good. So, yes. Yeah, so my name is Robin Devine, and I'm a massage therapist here in the city of Calgary. And I've been a massage therapist now for 23 years. And when I got into everything and decided to be a massage therapist, I had no idea about lymphedema. I had no knowledge about um really the lymphatic system. Unfortunately, in a lot of massage and a lot of physio and even traditional medical training, there is not a lot taught about the lymphatic system. And so, you know, I learned, you know, I think about, we got about three hours of training on the lymphatic system and what to do for lymph issues. But I was very pleasantly surprised when I um, accidentally attended a course that I needed for credits and it was lymph drainage and I absolutely fell in love. So anyone who knows me knows I'm what we call a lymphomaniac. I absolutely love the lymph system. It makes so much sense. It is scientifically um, absolutely beautiful. And it, it is just such common sense. So a lot of times, you know, there's lots of different sort of treatment types and modalities that are available out there. And sometimes they might, you know, bend the barriers a bit of science, but lymph system and lymph drainage makes sense. And it does for me. And so it's what I've been really doing for the last 20 years. And in 2015, I decided to become a lymphedema therapist and loved it it again, makes absolute sense. Um, 
and it is a treatment and an approach that I can get behind 100%. And so in 2017, I got kind of up on my high horse and I said, you know, there should be some private clinics that are not just run by government health agencies. And um, someone took me to task and said, well, you should just open a clinic. And so I did. And I'm very proud to say um, this week is our fifth anniversary for our clinic. It's our fifth birthday. And uh, just this past summer, we opened a secondary location in Calgary as well. So what I'm also here to just let everybody know is that there is a high demand for lymph drainage therapists and highly recommend that if you know a massage therapist or a physiotherapist, anybody who might feel compelled or drawn to working with lymphedema, there it is not a competition thing. I would gratefully treat and teach hundreds of massage therapists or physios here in the city of Calgary. There is a high need for this skill, and I very proudly would teach anyone to do it because um, you can have a very successful business and help a lot of people. So, um, so yeah, so I own the Lymph Balance Center and I also got a little bit frustrated that there was no lymphedema or lymphatic conferences, um, pretty much West of Toronto. And so I said, well, I'll just start my own. So that is LymphyCon and we play off of it. It's kind of like Comic-Con, but better because it's the lymph system. And that's happening next Saturday here in Calgary, um, down in Quarry Park in the southeast of the city at the Cardell Theater. Um, and on the last slide, it has the website. You can go check it out. Um, we only have 150 tickets. If you want to come and learn more about what is the lymphatic system, and there's uh, six, seven different speakers. We have vendors. It is a full day kind of immerse yourself in the lymphatic system. Um, and so on top of all of that, um, I absolutely love teaching this skill and this um, business to other therapists. So I'm also a teacher for the Chickley Health Institute internationally um, to teach therapists how to become lymphatic therapists, but also um, just recently created our own lymphedema program. So also teaching therapists now to be lymphedema therapists. So this is, this is my little podium of happiness. This is where I hang out and I'm extremely passionate about the lymphatic system. So I'm very excited that you had some time to join us on this beautiful, really cold uh, Thursday evening in Calgary, wherever you are, I hope you're warmer than what's outside. So tonight I'm going to explain to you a little bit what is, sometimes we call it complex decongestive therapy, sometimes we call it complete decongestive therapy and why it works and how it works and all the steps. And so a lot of times when patients come in for the first time, um, to our clinics, they'll say, I have lymphedema or I've had lymph nodes removed. What's the process? And my front desk will very graciously <laughs> educate them about what is CDT. So I'm going to walk you through all the fun pieces that are CDT. There we go. All right. So the first thing I'm going to share with you is that your lymphatic system carries a fluid called lymph. Sometimes it's called lymphatic fluid. Sometimes it's called lymph. But your lymph is made up of 96% water. And so as a lymph therapist, it is actually pretty easy to tell how hydrated you are and how dehydrated you are based on the consistency and the what the feel is of your lymphatic fluid. So as I'm feeling through your skin. So 96% of it is water. The other 4%, even though it seems like it's a very low percentage, actually is very, very, very important. So we have some plasma proteins, which are these beautiful proteins that come out from your bloodstream and it happens every day. So everybody has proteins that leak out of their bloodstream. And um, it's a really kind of an important piece when we get to talking a little bit later, but any digestive fats, any fats that you're eating will get absorbed through your small intestine into these little structures called lacteals and gets into your bloodstream and we process it through our lymph. Lots of hormones get circulated through your lymphatics, different kinds of cells, whether they're um, cancer cells, whether they are you know, viral cells, if they are broken down cells, lots of things, debris, and even DNA. So these are all things that trans, um, sort of are transported throughout your system, okay? So the number one sort of foundation thought when we look at the lymphatic system is 
if you were in biology 30, or if you went and took, um, you know, all these different kinds of trainings when you were younger, you learned that, you know, your blood pumps out blood and water, or your heart pumps out blood, water, oxygen, nutrients to tissues all around your body. And when it does that, um, it is circulating those structures that those things around your body and all your cells around your body, then um, taking the oxygen, taking the nutrients, taking the water, and all your cells give off their waste products. And so every tissue in your body that has blood has lymph. So all of those cells, whether they're muscle cells or skin cells or hair cells or eyeball cells, they take in all those nutrients and then they give off their waste products. And when I was in high school, they told me that the veins then carried all the waste products back to the heart. And in 2009, 2010, it was actually disputed and has been now corrected to say that 99.9% .9 of all the waste products that your cells give off have to get picked up by your lymphatic system. And so what that enforces even more so now than ever is the importance of what is your lymphatic system and how it works, okay? So you are not only transporting lots of water and clearing that away from all your tissues and cells. And normally, you know, you have excess water to give off and that's great. But the other thing, the really important one in that bottom green box is those plasma proteins. And it sounds kind of weird that that would be an important thing, but plasma proteins, specifically albumin, which is this protein leaks out of your bloodstream and it cannot get picked up by anything other than the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system is like your amazing hydro water vacuum, if you will. And it has the ability to pick up those proteins. No other system really does. So if you don't pick up those proteins, they get stuck in your tissue. And what's interesting about those plasma proteins is they are extremely attractive to water. So for every one plasma protein that gets stuck in your tissues, three molecules of water get attached to it. So imagine if you don't get rid of those plasma proteins, what happens to your tissues? You get lots of plasma proteins and then lots of water gets attached onto it. So that's really, really important because without the lymph system functioning to its best, your tissues are filled with a lot of plasma proteins, waste products, debris, hormones, digestive fats, et cetera, and lots of water. So where is your lymph really found? So we said this before is that your lymph is found everywhere you have blood. So if you, your hair doesn't have blood, okay? So there's no lymph in your hair. Your, um, let's see where else, the cornea of your eye doesn't have lymph because there's no blood there. But everywhere where you have blood, you have lymph. So this is a cross section of skin because 70% of the lymph currently in your body is actually hiding just underneath your skin. So this top layer here of your skin is called the epidermis and there's no blood in this top layer of skin. You know, when you like scratch yourself and you don't bleed, but you know, you're shedding off layers of skin. That's the section of your skin. There's no blood. So guess what? There's no lymph. But as we go deeper and we go below this wavy line, this is your dermis and your dermis has blood. Not only does it have blood, but it also has your hair follicles. It has your oil glands. It has your sweat glands. It has a lot. And so if there's blood down here, we have lymph. And actually this little layer underneath this wavy line, this is called your dermal epidermal junction. And 70% of all the lymph in your body is right there. That's why lymph drainage is so gentle and so light. There is lymph in your muscles and there's lymph in your bones and there's lymph around your nerves. They're all functional, but the majority of it is right there, okay? So when we're working, we're working here. So if you get a paper cut and you don't get any blood leaking out, that's okay. That means you probably got a paper cut in this top region here. But if you have a paper cut and you got a little bit of blood coming out, that means you've now cut through this layer 
and you now have blood, which also means you have access to your lymphatic system. So I am just trying to see, give me one second here. I'm worried that my power is not plugged into my computer, but hopefully we'll be okay. All right. If you lose me and I'm gone, I'll be right back, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be fine. All right. So where does your lymph want to go? So all your tissues around your whole body, you have all this waste products that need to get picked up and moved. And where are they trying to go? They're trying to go up to the base of your neck. It sounds weird. I have a lot of people who call and they go, oh no, you just have to send the lymph to my kidneys because it'll filter it out. And yeah, kind of in a roundabout way, but I have to help your system get the lymph up to where it's going to dump back into your bloodstream. So all this green here is the major lymphatic vessels. So again, all your skin has lymph, all your muscles have lymph, your bones, your organs, all of that has lymph. And I'm trying to get it to be supported to move along its natural pathways all the way to the base of the neck. So if you look here, this is your thymus. It's behind your sternum, your bone there. But you'll see right here, this is where your lymph actually dumps back into your bloodstream. And we call this the angulus venosus or the vein of the angle. And we're trying to get the lymph, whether it's from the arms, traveling all the way up through the armpit and dumping black into the bloodstream there. If it's for the head, it's draining down into the base of the neck. And if it's from the feet, it's coming all the way up. It's going through the groin and then traveling all the way up to there. So I don't know if you noticed this, but that means like the lymph in your body, 90% of it, anything below your neck, when you're vertical and walking around and living life, it's moving against gravity. So Sometimes you sit there and you go, what the heck was our body thinking? Placing the dumping zone way back up at the base of my neck. So your body had to come up with ways to move that fluid against gravity to get it all the way back up here. And this comes into play a lot when we look at lymphedema, because when your lymph system is tired and your system is not working to its 100% top notch AOK -okay level, that's where we really need to have support. So this is a video of a lymphatic vessel contracting. This was mind boggling to me because when I did all of my training initially, I was told, well, you know, muscles have to contract. That's how you move lymph. Um, you know, the diaphragm has to contract. The skeletal muscles have to contract. So that was the, the basics. But nobody told me that in the wall of your larger vessels, it actually contracts. There's a spiral shaped muscle in there contracting, just like your heart does every single day. This is a smooth muscle that is auto rhythmic. It moves on its own. I don't have to do anything. Now it contracts when I'm relaxed. It uses that part of my nervous system that is my resting and digesting part. And so as it contracts, it uses also the concept of a valve, just like our veins do, because valves keep fluid moving in one direction only. We don't like backflow. We want fluid going in one direction. So on the screen here, the fluid's actually coming down the screen, going through this valve. And then when it relaxes, the fluid comes back up into these little eddies on either side of the valve. And that is extremely important because again, if I'm working against gravity for 90% of my body, oh my goodness gracious, I need to have valves to help keep things moving in one direction. I do not want it to be going back down because otherwise your feet fill, your legs fill, your hands will fill, and you can't fight gravity. She's pretty strong. But when you are horizontal and you are hanging out, lying down in bed or watching TV, gravity doesn't have the same kind of impact on those valves. And so a lot of people will feel significantly better first thing in the morning or throughout the night and notice that the swelling's gone down. And that's because you haven't been fighting against gravity all night long. And so that is a huge, huge thing. So just so you know, I, I do have the chat up. If you want to put a comment or a question in the chat, I don't mind. I'll keep an eye on it. 
Um, but just so you know. All right. So then the big question, and this always happens too, is what is truly lymphedema? So lymphedema is not the same as edema. A lot of people get that confused. The edema means that you have fluid that is in your tissues that is unable to be moved effectively. So if somebody has surgery or what have you, and there's a lot of inflammation, a lot of fluid, that's edema. But when your lymphatic system has been damaged or is insufficient to move the fluid, so it becomes overtired, it becomes compromised in whatever way, it could be from birth. Some people are born with incomplete lymphatic systems or non-functioning valves or very small vessels or really, really big vessels that the valves don't really work. Um, sometimes at the end, you know, as people get older, the veins become even more incompetent. Um, we see venous insufficiency and then the lymph system gets taxed. That can become, but basically in edema, when the lymph system has been damaged or is insufficient, that is lymphedema. So the hardest thing to explain to a lot of patients is that specifically in situations where there's been surgical intervention, cancer, et cetera, is that if you have one lymph node removed, you have lymphedema. If you have 32 lymph nodes removed, you have lymphedema. If you've had a lymph node removed and absolutely no swelling whatsoever, you still have lymphedema. It just is not showing itself visibly. So I'm going to show you some pictures. So what I love about how things have evolved is that this picture, this is actually um, a model and she proudly models with her lymphedema leg and it's bringing such beautiful awareness. And I love it um, because there are things that we can change in life and there are ways that we can adapt. And sometimes there's an acceptance and a working with it. And um, yeah, just absolutely love that um, her confidence when it comes to her legs. So this is what lymphedema looks like. And I'm sure everybody here, um, if you if you have lymphedema yourself or a family member or friends, et cetera, lymphedema looks different for everyone. So on this slide, it shows stage one, two, three, and four, which is one way of looking at it. In some books, instead of stage one, it'll be stage zero. So it'll go stage zero and then stage one, two, three. Okay, so yes, there are four stages. It just depends on how you name them. And so in most of the training that I've done and I've trained with the Chickley Institute, I've trained with Vodder, um, it really doesn't matter. But stage one here on the slide, in my world, we call this stage zero because this is where the lymph system has been compromised. And it could be from a mastectomy. It could be from um, colon cancer. It could be from a, a hysterectomy or it could be primary. They were just born with an incomplete system. But stage one or stage zero here, it doesn't look drastically different. And so stage zero or stage one here, we call this the latent stage or the subclinical stage, which means that yes, your system is compromised, but everything seems to be holding for now. So it's kind of like this beautiful balance. Things are working, but there's always a chance things could get out of control. So it means as a therapist, I know that there's always going to be a potential that things could change and we could start seeing swelling, but my job is to try and keep them at that stage. So if you were walking down the street, you wouldn't notice or think that they have lymphedema, but they do. They're just not showing swelling. Now, when swelling starts to happen, we call that stage on this slide, it's going to say stage two. In my world, that's stage one. And what happens is, is that something tips the scales. So maybe it's a sunburn. Maybe they decided to go in a jacuzzi and sit in the hot water for a little bit too long. Something caused an extra amount of fluid to accumulate in that limb, in that area of the body. And it was enough that your lymph system goes, oh my gosh, I can't handle this today. And it swole up. But the amazing thing about that stage is that it can reverse. And so on the slide stage two in my world, stage one, we actually call that spontaneously reversible. 
So you do something throughout the day, it makes it a little bit hard. Maybe you went like super shopping. Maybe you decide you're going to shopping, you had like your bag and your purse and all those kinds of things and you're carrying them. And it's just, it was too much. I see this a lot with my clients when they have new grandbabies or they have a friend who had babies. So they're carrying them around all the time and it was just too much. So they swell for a day or two and then the lymph system is able to recover and the fluid goes away. And that's actually your body trying to say, hey, look, that was too much. I need you to pay attention and I need you to be aware that that was too much. And hopefully I can keep my clients in this, these two stages here. Okay. That's my goal in life. Unfortunately, I tend to see clients when they get to on the slide stage three, which again, in my world is stage two. And what we do is we call this now it's spontaneously irreversible. So what happens is, is you went from a stage where your system could recover for short periods of time, but eventually it just got to be too much. And it was like, look, lady, look, man, I was telling you that this wasn't working. I was telling you that you can't just go into, you know, onto an airplane without compression garments. And yes, I could recover from it for three days afterwards, but, you know, I was trying to tell you that this wasn't working for me. And so your body gets to a point where it's like, I was trying really hard and I was maintaining that stage for you, but I can't anymore. And so on the slide, stage three is actually when your body starts to make adaptations and we notice skin changes. And so if you look at the pictures, you can see there ends up being like these little cuffs. We start seeing a little bit of thickening. The skin starts to get a little bit thicker and that's your body's going, look, the lymph system's not able to recover as well. So what could I do to prevent the fluid from stretching further? And your body's answer is, well, let's thicken the skin a little bit and make it tougher for it to stretch out. So your body at this stage is doing its very best to accommodate and to prevent more swelling. But at this stage as a therapist, there is very little chance I'll be able to get that limb exactly to look like the unaffected limb. It is very difficult. Even with all the tricks in my tool belt, I'll, I can get it down. I just will probably never get it to look like both legs are the same. It's very hard. Okay. If stage three on here is not appreciated and cared for, that's when we can go into stage four. Now, in most places, you'll hear this as being stage three. Sometimes it's called elephantiasis. Sometimes it's called lymphostatic elephantiasis. And what that means is that the lymph is stopped. It's very, very, very slow. So we call it lymphostatic. And elephantiasis has to do with a, the size of the limb, but also the skin changes to be thicker, even thicker than it was in the stage before. And it can actually get so thick that it feels almost like elephant skin because it's trying to prevent the skin from stretching even further. So your body's trying to adapt and witness the fact that all it can do is try and get thicker to prevent itself. And so those are the main stages of lymphedema. That's what we're working for. So as a therapist, my job is to try and not let you go further down the scale than where you are. And if I can, to maybe move you the other way on the scale. So if you are at stage two, my goal is to keep you at stage two and prevent you from ever going to stage three or four. Okay. If you're in stage one, my job is to educate the living daylights out of you and make sure you have all the tools you can. So that way we don't start seeing swelling. So a lot of the times we think of lymphedema only as limbs, and it would be so much easier in life if lymphedema only affected the limbs. Um, because they're so easy to wrap. Um, but it is very common to see lymphedema of the face. We're seeing a lot of it these days in regards to thyroid cancer, um, oral cancers, lymph nodes get removed, the face becomes swollen, and it's not as easy to wrap as a limb. Limbs are beautiful. They're, you can wrap all around the edges of it. It just It's so nice and satisfying. Um, wearing compression on the face, um, if you've ever seen the movie, The Man in the Iron Mask, that's literally, I just, I'm claustrophobic to a certain extent, and that just does not sound like fun. You get a lot of fluid underneath the jawline. That's very hard to control. 
eyelids are very hard to control. Anywhere you have lymph, you have the potential for lymphedema. So um, I've unfortunately seen some really rare cases of lymphedema. I've seen lymphedema of an eyeball, um, an ear, which is very painful as well. The skin does not stretch very far. And genitalial um, lymphedema. So for women, the, the labia themselves get very, very, very swollen. Feels like you're almost walking around with a very hard hot dog bun um, between your legs. And for men, it can be between the size of a testicular um, lymphedema. You can look at the size of a baseball. Um, recently, I've seen several cases where grapefruit size, if not basketball size testicles. So, you know, there's, there's lymphedema everywhere. You can get it in the trunk. You can get breast lymphedema. You can get lymphedema everywhere. There's lymph. So unfortunate reality. All right. So this is CDT. CDT and sometimes you'll see it as CDP, like um, paper. So it can have many different ways of breaking down the acronym. So um, I like the phrase complete decongestive therapy. Sometimes we call it complex decongestive therapy. And I've started to get away from using that because I've had clients who go, if it's complex, I probably can't do it. Or if it's complex, it's probably really expensive. Um, so complete feels better for me and it feels better for a lot of my patients. Decongestive makes sense. We're going to decongest the tissue and this is the therapy. So there are two phases to how complete decongestive therapy works. Sometimes you'll see therapy actually be a P and that means physiotherapy, but I'm not a physiotherapist. So I wouldn't use that term anyways. All right. So phase one is trying to decongest the limb. So if you have, let's say, lymphedema of your right arm, my job is to try and help get that arm as small as I can, okay? So the first thing you'll see is there's four pieces, okay? So there's lymph work, there's actual manual hands-on lymph drainage, using compression bandages, and we'll talk about each of the steps. Making sure you wear your compression bandages while you exercise, because that's like that's like getting lymph drainage and wearing compression at the same time. If you exercise while wearing compression, oh, so much better. And then also making sure that we're keeping your skin happy and healthy, as well as if there's any wounds, addressing those wounds, looking at your nails, all those things. Okay. And once we've gotten that limb as small as we can. And the way that we do that is we do all four of those steps and we measure frequently. So our job is to look and see how the limb is doing, make sure we have compliance, everything is working well, moving forward and we measure. And when we start measuring and we notice that the numbers aren't going down anymore, that means you've kind of plateaued. You're kind of as small as we're gonna get you. And once we recognize that you've plateaued and the limb can no longer get smaller, that's where we move on to our maintenance phase, okay? So the maintenance phase is very similar to the decongestive phase with some adaptations. So we're still gonna do manual lymph work, but we probably don't need to see you as frequently because now we're in the maintenance. We're keeping it at that level where we want it to be. We're still gonna put on skin cream and so on. And the important thing when we look at lotions for lymphedema is we wanna make sure that it mimics the acid mantle that is already on your skin. So your skin is not a neutral pH. Neutral pH or having an alkaline or a basic pH on your skin invites bacterial infection. So naturally your sweat and your oils on your skin create an acid mantle. And what that does is when bacteria and other pathogens land on your skin, you don't have to fight it with your immune system because it's kind of acidic and they don't really survive. But if I put on really nice lotion that I got from a really fancy store, or my husband just went and found whatever lotion he found, wherever he found it, and I put it on my skin and it's not the right pH, it can invite potential bacterial growth. So the lotions that we use need to be a pH five around there. We don't want it to be a pH seven or higher. So we're very picky about the lotions that we put on. 
And that makes sure that your skin, if you do get a little scratch, or if your skin is really frail or very thin, papery, that we are doing as much as we can to protect your skin so you're not getting infections, okay? You still get to do exercise. And it's not like, we're not asking, you're not climbing mountains and doing crazy stuff, but you're keeping the limb moving while it's in compression. And the difference between stage one or phase one decongestive garments and phase two maintenance garments is phase one, my job is to help shrink the limb and make it smaller. So we use different material than we do when we're in maintenance phase because maintenance phase's job is to keep it at that size. So I'm gonna show you a little bit about that in a sec here, okay? Again, if you have any questions, please put it in the chat. I don't mind at all. Or we can keep them to the end as well, it's all good. All right, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is hands-on lymph therapy. So it doesn't really matter what you call it. Um, I've been a Chickley trained therapist now for almost 20 years. So I have a hard time saying manual lymph drainage or MLD because um, we call it lymph drainage therapy. Or if you're you know, French, like the guy who developed it, it's lymph drainage therapy and it doesn't really matter. Um, the great part is they're all trying to do the same thing. So it's not a question of which training, it's that they're a certified lymphedema therapist. So if that's your sister or your mother or your brother or your dog, and they have sinus issues, or they have a little bit of swelling issues, you can go to a massage therapist or a physiotherapist who has lymph training. That's fine. If you have lymphedema, and the lymph system has now been compromised, you can't just see any lymph therapist. I wish it was that easy, but it's not. You need to have a therapist who understands all four of these things, can do the compression, can do the skin care, can do the exercises, and can do the very specific lymph work that is designed for lymphedema. Because when you have lymphedema, your lymph doesn't go in the traditional routes. Sometimes it goes in different pathways. So I'm gonna show you that in a sec. So you wanna look for somebody who's a certified lymphedema therapist. And like I said at the beginning, there are not enough of us. That's why I teach and have clinics and have such a large team is because there's enough clients to go around. We all can be helping lymphedema patients and there is a high, high need for it. So I have clients who drive in from Jasper and I see them once every three to four months. And the great part is they have a massage therapist who understands really basic lymph. So I communicate with that therapist and I say, hey, you know, this is what we're doing. Can you do this, this? And so they're still able to treat, but we're co-treating together. It's not about that that client has to come and see me three times a week. It's they see me once every couple of months and their therapist can continue it, but they don't have the specialized training. So we co-manage together. And unfortunately, it's very common, especially in North America, but all over the world, people travel really far to see a lymphedema therapist. And we're very flattered, but trust me, we don't want you driving that far to get to us. Driving for long periods of time is not good for your lymph system either. So it's always great to have a certified lymphedema therapist in your neck of the woods and to work with them. So there's lots of different schools that teach lymphedema training. There is um, Vodder, who is one of the most well-known uh, lymphedema training. Um, and the irony of it is that Dr. Vodder actually didn't create it for lymphedema. His original reason of creating lymphatic hands-on treatment was to help with acne and skin conditions. Um, but they were able to take it and evolve it into working with lymphedema. So I love, I love Dr. Vodder and what he created. It, it works really well. Close Norton, um, the Academy of Lymphatic Studies. And like I said, I just recently created the, the program for the Chickley Health Institute. So there are lots of schools of training. Again, though, it's a therapist who likes lymphatic training and wants to do lymph drainage. That's the, that's the important piece is having somebody who's passionate about it. So all right, so you're going to hear that piece. Sorry about that. Um, so this is this is me working on um, our physiotherapist, Fiona. She's also a lymphedema therapist. And she um, 
agreed to be on the table. This is me just sort of wanting to show you a little bit about what lymph drainage looks like. So you'll notice that I never call it lymph massage. And you'll know why is that it looks nothing nor feels like anything like massage. So anybody who calls it lymph massage is lying. <laughs> it doesn't feel anything. So we very cautiously do never, we never ever say lymph massage because it sets up the expectations that it's going to be a real massage. It's not. Lymph drainage is all about working on the very superficial. Remember that 70% of all the lymph in your body is right under the skin. So if I do massage, yes, it will have an impact on your lymph system. Is it as specific as being very delicate and working specifically just with the lymphatic system and really focusing in and isolating the lymph system? No. So this is, this is what it looks like. Now with a lymphedema patient or with a client on the table, sometimes we have them get undressed like a massage client and under the sheets and the linens and everything like that is perfect. Um, for the sake of the videography, we just kept her dressed. It was just more simplified. Um, and we can work through certain types of clothing because as long as it gives and allows for me to get that gentle stretch on the skin, that's the important piece. Now you'll notice there's no lotion applied. Lotion will be slippery and I don't get the stretch. The stretch is so important. And that stretch is what actually moves a lot of the lymphatic fluid for me. We also want to make sure that all your lymph nodes are nice and open. I want to make sure that all the pathways are open because my job as a lymph therapist is not to force lymph to go to a specific group of nodes. If I force your lymph to do something, as soon as I take my hands off, it's going to go, that's not really what I wanted to do. And I'm going to go the way that I want. So my job as a lymphedema therapist is to open up the pathways of your lymphatic system and make sure that it has every opportunity for the lymph to move in the direction that it wants to, because that will hold after you leave my table. Okay. So right now, this is actually the deepest kind of work that we do is in the abdomen. And that's as deep as it looks. Um, it feels a little bit deeper when you're on the table, but it's never painful. Lymph drainage therapy, manual lymph therapy should never be painful. If it is, what ends up happening is there might be scar tissue. There might be other things that are blocking the lymph. And that's not my goal. I might need to go and work on those scars, those fascial restrictions, whatever is there. But it should never be painful. You should be as relaxed as you possibly can because again, your lymph system works at its utmost best when you are rest and relaxed and almost in a sedentary kind of sleep state. So the most common thing we hear during a session is snoring. And that is the most complimentary thing and your gut will start gurgling. We'll hear all of your little gurgles and I think it's gonna be very good that way. So when I'm working as a lymph therapist, my job is to, again, everything's trying to get up to the base of the neck. The legs have to drain up to the groin, which is where my hands are now. And then it's got to go through the abdomen all the way up. So you'll notice I started at the spot where it's going to empty back into the bloodstream. And I'm looking, I'm looking for restrictions. I'm looking for areas that are really congested. So if you live in Calgary, this next analogy will make sense. And if you live somewhere else, just picture the big road that bisects your city. So basically imagine in Calgary, this would be like the Deerfoot Trail, okay? If there's an accident or there's been congestion, there's been a lot of fluid, it's like having an accident on the major road that bisects your city. When it's blocked, what happens to all the roads that go up to it? It gets blocked. You get traffic congestion. Your lymph is the same. If there is a blockage or if lymph is stuck, everything below it has nowhere to go. And yeah, you can find all these little alternate pathways. You can find the side routes. 
in Calgary, you might be able to take Glenmore Trail or McLeod Trail or Barlow or Crow Child. There's a lot of other roads you can take, but is it as efficient as going on the main road? Not really. Okay. When you have lymphedema, not only are the roads potentially congested, but sections of the roads might have been taken out. So not only am I working with you know, damaged area, but we're also dealing with areas that might have sections physically removed. So that might be a situation where I literally can't take and send fluid up along that main pathway. I actually have to work with your body and show it all these alternate pathways. So we joke about it in the clinic. It's kind of like I'm Siri. And my job is to show it all the alternate pathways. Your Google Maps comes up and I'm going to show you all the extra pathways that you could take because the main one's not available today. And so as a lymph therapist, I'm going in and I'm making sure all the roads that are going to help move the fluid out of that limb have as many options as possible. I'm never forcing fluid to go in a direction that it doesn't want to go because that will not hold. But if I open and clear all the pathways and make sure that there are tons of options, when I take my hands off, your body that is so innately smart and intelligent will choose the best pathways to move that fluid. So that's my goal. My goal is to be there and help support your body to the best of its abilities to move as much as you can on its own, okay? So when maybe this pathway is not working well, I might send the limp from the leg up along the side to the armpit, which sounds weird. Like why would, because there's lymph nodes in the armpit that can help decongest that fluid. So again, it might not be the conventional way of doing things, but lymphedema is not conventional. So my job is more about giving options. I'm an options girl. I want you to be able to choose what you want to do. So, um, so there's a couple questions in the comments. So Kathleen, my dear friend, um, do I have brands of cream that I offer in the clinic for purchase or if general recommendations, we could find a local pharmacy. So the big thing with creams is you want to look online and you want to find out what their pH is or get like the little testing kits to do pH. And so the lotions that tend to be accepted in the industry and by schools of training tend to be like Glaxal base, CeraVe, um, Aquaphor. Those are the most commonly um, recommended. Um, and they're constantly changing like the ingredient list a little bit. And so we want to make sure that we're checking to see what the current pH scale is. And um, there was one before that had a beautiful pH, but then they changed it. Um, and that really kind of irritated the heck out of me. Um, and so, yeah, that wasn't really fun. I just want to confirm everybody's seen the video. Everybody was able to see the video. Okay, good. Um, and then Carissa, um, should your legs always be elevated during the procedure? It So we actually elevate legs depending on the client. So if you have leg lymphedema, absolutely. Because um, I want gravity to work with me, not against me. So there's no, now if I'm working on you and you have to be in a chair because you can't lie down, et cetera, we might have to just work with what you have. Um, but if you're at the clinic on the table, and it's your legs that we're working on, it's always advisable to have your legs elevated. If it's your arm, and then we might put pillows underneath your knees anyways, because it helps relax your low back and it'll help you relax more on the table. So um, our tables, for example, are heated, which we can control the heat. That's actually, you know, we don't encourage people with lymphedema to go into a hot tub or a sauna, but this is just to relax your muscles and relax your low back and make sure that you're as comfortable as possible. So that's the other great part is just being able to make you as comfortable and as relaxed as possible. And that's really our goal is to make sure that that has an option for you. Um, I do have clients who it's really uncomfortable for them to raise their legs. So that might be a little bit of a change. 
All right. So that's like one of the only videos I've really done of us doing actual lymph drainage. So you guys saw it for the very first time. Um, I always just assume people know what it looks like, but I was educated otherwise. Um, so compression, we have two different kinds of compression. We have decongestion compression and we have maintenance compression. And you guys are very lucky. You have some very, very beautiful, um, I, you guys don't know this, but there's a, there's a compression garment rep in the room. And uh, you guys even had an awesome, uh, there was a presentation in January about compression garments and how and why they work. Highly recommend you go look into it in more detail. I do a talk as well about compression garments, um, but they're all pretty much the same. Their job is to keep the fluid out. Every day, gravity is going to be pulling down on you. And unfortunately, as we get older and the more that our skin stretches, the more fluid can fill into those spaces. So as we get older, our skin does not bounce back as well as it did when we were younger. And so the more wrinkles, the looser the skin, your body goes, hey, that is room for fluid, my friend. And it'll just fill because the lymph system can't do its job and pull it out. So in the decongestion phase, my job is to get a garment on you that can be shortened can be made slightly smaller, can be adjusted, can help move the fluid. And when the fluid moves out, we can tighten it just a little bit. So to keep that fluid out and maybe move smaller and smaller. So the first image you see on the left-hand side of your screen, that is conventional um, bandaging, wrapping, using very specific short stretch bandages. This is not tensor bandages from the dollar store or from London Drugs, my friends. Please do not it's the least favorite thing is when people come in and they're like, I saw a picture on Google images that showed this really nice tensor bandage. So I just went and bought a tensor bandage and I'm freaking out on the inside because that can actually cause a lot more damage than help. Um, but when we do conventional bandaging, this is still one of the gold standards when we look at reduction um, because we can customize it to that person's limb. So it can, if you have a big lobule or if like the underneath of your arm is really big, we can adjust it. There's a lot of layers though, and it can be kind of exhausting and clients can get very frustrated and decide that it's just not as much fun. Compliance is very low. So we're using gauze and foam and layers and bandages. And when it becomes a little loose later on in the day, because you've been moving and fluid has been moving out you have to take off a lot of it and reapply it. So I'm very lucky that in this day and age, there has been some really great advancements in what we call the decongestive um, kits, decongestive bandages. Um, you'll start seeing things like ready wraps, uh, things like um, the circade that's on the screen and that's using Velcro. And if it feels a little loose throughout the day, you just snug it up a little bit. So you, you're moving, your muscles are pumping, fluids getting pushed out and your bandage feels a little bit loose. You just suck it up a little bit and it keeps it moving forward instead of keeping it one size and then hoping you can get it tighter the next day. So there are some amazing compression that we can see these days for decongestion. And, um, you know, we do have, we have like, I think four compression garment companies coming to Lymphicon on the fourth and you can come and look at some of their newest products they're going to be showing. So I'm very excited because I'm sure there's a couple of things that I haven't seen. So once we get your limb as small as possible, our job is to make sure we get you the perfect garment and that perfect garment needs to fit you. No, totally pun intended, like a glove. It needs to fit you as if it's brand new skin. So basically a compression garment used in the maintenance space is to keep you where you are. And we are probably a little bit tired of seeing each other after getting so many treatments and you're trying to find a way to just go home and keep it that way and not have to pay and see me as often. And so the right garment is going to do that. It has to be the right strength. It needs to be the right material. It needs to be the right length. It needs to be measured properly. I joke about this with my husband all the time. There's no way in hell that he would wear my compression. My compression would be too small on him and it would create almost like a tourniquet and make things worse. And how useless would it be if I wore his compression because my body would just swell to fill up the extra space that is between my skin and the compression garment that's measured for him. 
So a compression garment needs to be fitted by a garment fitter. I love Amazon for so many things, but compression garments is not one of them. Seeing a fitter if you can, get it measured properly. Sometimes it needs to be a custom garment. Sometimes we can fit you into categories like size one, two, three, four. And the colors and the options and the materials and the, the levels of strength and all the options and the, the donning aids and all these things that make it so much better than it was even 15, 20 years ago. I think it was actually the thing that scared me off lymphedema treatment as much as it did was because it just, it looked horrible. And now it's like, I got clients getting tie dye and they like the ones that have the henna birds on them and they can customize it to their personality and um, some really great stuff. So I compression needs to be the right compression. So again, just going online and picking one is not the right way to do it. Um, definitely needs to be fitted to fit you perfectly. Skin conditions and things that we look at are not fun things. This was the other thing that scared me off of doing lymphedema work, but you know what? I'm an extra set of eyes and we catch things. We catch things that you didn't think of were important. So when you have decreased circulation, you have a decreased immunity in those limbs. It's like a diabetic. Think of the lymph fluid is not moving out of your tissue. Okay. So you're not getting as much fluid out of the limb. So that means you can't be bringing in fresh blood with oxygen and nutrients and water because there's not as much space for the fresh stuff to go in. So you've got a lot of waste products just sitting in your tissues. And the worst analogy I can come up with is kind of like, you know, my grandparents had a farm. It's kind of like the slough in the middle of their farm. There's no fresh fluid going in because there's no fluid leaving. It becomes like this little slough. And unfortunately, bacteria, viruses, everything like to be there. So nail fungus is very common. Um, and definitely it can spread much faster um, because there's decreased immunity and, and circulation within the limb. So we want to make sure that we're seeing a technician who knows what they're doing for lymphedema. Regular estheticians are not trained in working with lymphedema unless they're an oncology esthetician, um, which we have a couple we work with they know lymphedema. They understand the tissue changes that happen. They can treat the nail fungus. They can treat ingrowns. They can treat all those things safely. Um, but just going to a regular esthetician, soaking your feet, you know, if you have fungus on one foot and you put both feet into the, the thing and you're soaking it there in nice warm water, it's just not advisable. <laughs> Um, you also can't have any kind of cuts or scrapes. If you go for a pedicure and you have lymphedema in your leg, you cannot get your cuticle cut. You have to be very careful. Any little cut, any little scratch is an infection potential. So we're constantly watching for those things. We're looking for, maybe you were scratching last night because when lymph is stuck in your tissues, it's itchy. It can feel like it's an itch. You just can't scratch and you scratch and then you cut through the skin and then you get a little infection and it is hard. So we're always watching. Your skin can develop these little pustules. They look like little water blisters. And that happens when the skin gets weak enough that the lymph actually just comes out through your skin. And that's called lymphorrhea. Um, lymphorrhea, there are ways that we can deal with bandaging and with wrapping and compression but that's what we're looking for as well. And we're always looking for if you have venous wounds, arterial wounds, and we're also looking for skin infections, whether it's a bacterial growth or heaven forbid, if you have cellulitis. And if you have lymphedema and you don't know about cellulitis, um, first off, don't freak out. It's not, you know, of course, if we do Google images, we'll always get the worst things first. So it's okay. This is a very strong case of cellulitis on the bottom right-hand side of your screen. Cellulitis is an infection that gets into your skin and it spreads like wildfire. And as a lymph therapist, um, one of my colleagues, actually a couple of my colleagues are here tonight and um, we've actually caught it for clients coming in. They're like, I don't know, I feel a little off. My leg's just a little bit warm, but it's, it's swelling. So I need a treatment. 
and we end up having to turn on all the lights and look and we're like, oh, it kind of looks like cellulitis. And if I do lymph drainage on a limb that has cellulitis, it will spread like wildfire. It's like me like putting gasoline on it, it will spread. So cellulitis, if you watch TV medical or whatever, they'll put a black line at the edge of the infection. And over the next 20 minutes, 30 minutes, hour, you'll see the red go past that line that is cellulitis. You cannot just go to your doctor. You can't wait 24 hours. You need to go to urgent care or the hospital and get IV antibiotics. It is very, very serious. So that's something else that we're trained in is making sure everything moves and making sure that if there is things that need to be taken care of, that we're your extra set of eyes. And then we wanna make sure that you are keeping moving and that you are supporting your lymphatic system as best as you possibly can. So we give you self-care and we give you exercises and things to take home and do. We show you how to do your own lymph drainage. We might, we have um, exercise classes and um, lymphatic yoga and all those kinds of things as well at our clinic because we have a beautiful classroom, but you wanna keep moving. So this lady over here on the top right, she has a compression garment on and she's walking. She's doing power walking. Love that. So there are garments that are more ideal for exercise. And those are things that we need to look at. There's aquatic lymphatic therapy or even just getting into water. If you, the, my favorite stat and my staff all know this is that if you stand in water in a pool and it's chest deep, the amount of water compression around your feet from all the fluid pushing in around your foot, that is actually a higher compression value than I can put you in a stocking. So when COVID hit, that sucked. And as a manual therapist, it royally sucked. But the fact that all the pools were closed and my clients who use water therapy to continue their, their health and everything sucked more. <laughs> So we weren't able to continue that, but water, swimming, all those things, really, really, really great. We also do lymphatic taping. So using um, kinesiology tape in pathways and patterns, very similar to K-taping, but a different approach using the lymph to actually, the tape to actually lift the skin gently to help move the fluid. But if you have an allergy to an adhesive, we can't use that technique. It's not an option because it'll cause more inflammation. But lymphatic taping is a very, very um, new up and coming kind of approach. And it works really well, something that we can do in clinic. And then you can take a roll home and you can continue it in between sessions. Works really great. Um, lymphatic yoga or Tai Chi. Lymphatic yoga is very repetitive movements around large clusters of nodes. Um, really helps with lymph movement. And if you're wearing compression garments, even better. Um, using rebounders. Rebounders were huge in the 70s. Um, but really what they're doing is they create not only a difference in the gravitational force that happens between your chest and your abdomen, which helps move lymph up through your abdomen, which fighting against gravity, but it also helps you control the contractions in your lower legs. And if you're wearing compression garments, amazing. So doing, being on a rebounder for 10 minutes is kind of like going for a 45 minute walk. So for clients who aren't comfortable going outside in the snow, icy areas, et cetera, it is a great option. It is not trampolining like my kids like to play on it. Um, it's really just keeping your feet flat on the, on the trampoline and letting your heels go up and down. It's very, very non-aggressive, but you have to be careful of your knees. And then the last one on there is a pneumatic compression pump. And so we have a couple of these in our clinic that um, sometimes clients will come in and just use them once in a while. People, you know, rent them from us for a week, try it out, but it's just using chambers of air to help almost mimic a lymph drainage session using chambers of air and just kind of milking the limb towards the torso. So there are medical grade ones that, um, you know, I hope you have some really good insurance or some extra funds to play with. Uh, the arm itself right there is around five to $6,000 medical grade. Um, and we, unfortunately, there's kind of a monopoly on uh, systems here in Canada. We don't have tons of options. Um, at our clinic, we can't, I can't afford to bring in the medical grade stuff. I wish I could. 
um, but I actually have no patients who'd be able to afford it. So we actually use a, um, an athletic grade and under the guidance of a lymphedema therapist, we're able to make sure the settings are done properly and gentle enough to help support lymphatic movement. It's, it's all that we could do to try and give options to our clients. So there's also dry brushing. There's so many different options out there really. And so those are all the beautiful pieces that make up complete decongestive therapy. So it's not just the hands-on, it's not just the exercises, it's all the pieces together. So for that reason, it's not as easy as, you know, um, a massage therapist who's taken a weekend. To become a lymphedema therapist, you know, it's 140 hours of online training, in-person training, um, written examination, hands-on examination, a lot of studying, a lot of research, um, but it isn't able to be treated just like everybody else. Your lymph system is compromised and it's unique. And your lymph system, if you had, have had lymph nodes removed or have a compromised system and you don't have swelling, that is an amazing thing to celebrate and be excited about because your system is so flipping smart and so innately intelligent that it has figured out how to move the lymph even though it's compromised. And it can do that. And people can have lymph nodes removed 20 years ago and have no problems until one day it's just too much. Something tips the scales. And that's where we're there to sort of help figure out how to get the scales back balanced and how to get you working the best that you can. So here in the city, um, you know, we have two centers. We have one down in the Southeast and one in the Northwest. Um, in our Southeast location, we have a classroom. We do a lot of classes about health and wellness and lymph drainage and lymph yoga, all those kinds of things. Um, and if you're interested, LymphyCon is next Saturday. I can't believe it's coming up so close. Um, and it's really, we're, we're actually creating also an online option in case you're unable to physically make it in person. We are creating an online option so you can zoom in and listen to all um, six of the presentations. Um, we have two presenters that are, you know, calling in and presenting from Ireland and from Ecuador that specialize in what they do. And um, yeah, it's just, it's one of those systems of the body that is severely overlooked, underappreciated, and really shouldn't be. It is your immune system. It is without your lymphatic system, you cannot survive. It is actually impossible and why we give so very little credit and so very little appreciation to a system that defends you against everything every single day and keeps your body functionally moving forward is ridiculous. And so, you know, I love, love, love um, questions. I love um, unique problems. And that's what we do. We're problem solvers in such a unique little world. And you know, if you have any questions or if there's any concerns or anything like that, you're more than welcome to send me an email, but you're also welcome to call the clinic and ask them for me to call you back. I don't mind. Um, we have a Facebook group. You're more than welcome to send a message through there if that's easier for you. But if you have questions about the care and the treatment plans that are for the lymphatic system, I'd love to help if, and I might not even be the closest therapist for you. And let me help you find a therapist that is close so you can get the one-on-one -on -one care and help and assistance that you need. So I'm just, I'm very, very grateful for the Alberta Lymphedema Association, um, you know, to have a, an association that is run by patients, established by a patient, um, and still be functioning at the level that it is, is a gift. So, you know, any and all support that you can for the Alberta Lymphedema Association and, you know, um, the awareness of the lymphatic system is a huge move forward um, for all of us. So I really appreciate that you had time this evening to come and listen to me rant on about the topic I am the most passionate about. And if you ask all my friends and family, um, anybody who knows me on Facebook, they go, oh God, she's talking about the lymph system again. And that's okay. Um, I would have like blue in the face. So Anyways, um, really grateful that I was able to to do this. And again, any questions, anything, please just reach out and I'd love to help. 
You came to the right audience, Robin, because <laughs> we love hearing about that. I think that that was an amazing presentation um, for both therapists and patients, right? Because we all want to know what options are available to us. And that's the thing. It's really difficult sometimes to find those options and to understand what the options are. And it is probably one of the biggest um, challenges, but also motivations for a lot of us in the field is to try and get as many people understanding, and that includes oncologists and surgeons and nurses and so on. So, um, you know, I wish it was just a random question, but what 20 years has taught me is that it's still a problem and it's still an issue. And a lot of people just don't understand until it's at its worst. So I'm really appreciative for Allah to be able to keep trying to educate to their best of ability um, as many people as possible, because that's the problem is the awareness. So. Yes. And you're getting lots of love in the chat. Um, I don't oh. see any questions. Everyone can feel free to, you know, unmute yourself or, or type in if you have any questions, but mostly just appreciation at the moment. <laughs> No, I, and it's good to, again, just connect with people who want to hear the information and want to, to share it and so on. And I'm, I'm really grateful that it's being recorded as well, because again, it's, you know, I do talks all the time and, you know, they hit different people at different times throughout their, their learning process and their health experience, um, and again, you know, in such a large country like Canada, we really, really, really do um, have issues with people who live really far away and can't access, you know, care. And even, you know, a lot of lymphedema support groups that are on Facebook, um, I'm in a lot of Facebook support groups for lymphedema and ones that are not even close to where I live. Um, and I always think, oh, you know, they're big areas like Florida, like there's got to be lots of lymphedema therapists in Florida. It's hot, it's sticky. And I say this with love, elderly population and like a lymphedema therapist would do so well, but there's not many there. <laughs> and so it's just really, um, it's just really good to share as much information as possible. So, yeah. Um, Jesse did ask if there is a, a lymph balance center in Edmonton, which I know there isn't yet. Um, so <laughs> it's funny. Um, so when I started and I decided to open up for clinic, um, I was like, you know, it'd be nice to have one in Calgary and, oh, it'd be kind of interesting to maybe have a second location, you know, four or five years down the road and didn't think it was going to happen. Like my, my lifelong dream would be to have a lymph balance center in Vancouver and Victoria and one in Edmonton and in, and that's kind of a goal that I have going forward. Um, but it is, it's just, it's a growth period. So I do know some amazing clinics in Edmonton and some really great therapists and Alla has one of the most extensive lists of lymphedema therapists in, in Calgary or is right in Alberta itself. Um, and there are some great ones in Edmonton. Um, and there's one bigger kind of center um, in Edmonton that, and, um, you can go check out them and check out their websites and so on. The, the bigger center I know is Solaris or Salut Salutaris, Salutaris. Um, and so there's a group of therapists that work out of one center, but it's kind of the unique thing. That's why I created the clinic. Cause I wanted to have a group of therapists that would work together that could all geek out about lymph and all support the craziness that is lymph therapy. Um, because working for myself was exhausting. Like just me, I couldn't see the clients as frequently as I needed to and do all the stuff. So building a team with such strong and passionate therapists was, you know, was my main goal because um, there just isn't anything else like it really. So it's the fun part. Perfect. Well, if there's no more questions at the moment, we will post this on our website uh, once the recording's ready so that you can share it with anyone who might be interested. Um, our next Lymphedema Night is with Kathleen next month. So uh, we hope you will be able to attend that one as well. And we thank you so, so much, Robin, for, for joining us tonight and giving us all of this information. My pleasure. Thanks for having me again. I really appreciate it. So, Good night, everyone. Right.